welcome to this lecture on the way of things. Uh, this lecture is going to be on a subject that is kind of a cross between reading sign and structure. Uh, and the basics of this uh, topic is basically holes in the desert, or holes that the animals uh, make in the desert. Uh, now from a poetic kind of standpoint, you can kind of look at holes in the ground and in the desert, especially if you're walking out across the, you know, greasewood flats or something. Um, it's kind of a parallel to the stars in the sky, where the stars are kind of a little uh, specks of daylight. The holes in the ground, uh, of course, are in the earth and not in the sky, but they're little specks of nighttime. They are the night uh, preserved in the ground. Another way to look at them, uh, not only is, is uh, the nighttime, but also kind of a spring and fall, a little piece of the spring or a little piece of the fall, uh, saved and preserved. Um, because the temperature in the ground uh, is preserved at about a mid-60s, right around between 65 and 70 degrees, about a foot or two down. Various things, reflectivity and, and stuff make a difference, but the point is, is that the temperature is a mild temperature. So in the winter time, if an animal goes into its hole, it can uh, escape the cold, which means it's escaping the need uh, for food. It's preserving its body temperature without the use of food. Uh, and in the summertime, during the extreme heat, it's preserving water. Uh, it can get into there during the hottest parts of the day. And indeed, many animals, like uh, most of your lizards and snakes, actually will die within a few minutes of uh, being on the surface in the midday sun in, in, in summer. They really have to have uh, those holes in the desert. Their, their life literally depends upon it. Uh, and by looking at these holes in the desert, you can gain a lot of information. Uh, after a while, you understand the different insects and how different lizards and, and, and uh, rats and stuff burrow in. You can kind of get an idea not only who's there, but the level of activity. You, you'll learn to see that oh, that's a freshly dug hole, or I'm seeing a lot of freshly dug holes, or very few. Uh, and it gives you a census as to the activity. Uh, that the uh, inhabitants, you know, are, whether they're expanding. Or, you know, if you see a lot of empty holes uh, with cobwebs in front of them, you kind of realize that the population of the animals that dug them holes is either inactive or, or has dropped. Uh, and many times, uh, you'll find that the uh, ability of the soil to be dug in makes enough difference as to whether there's a population of lizards or snakes and rodents and whatnot or not. It, what, regardless of the fertility of the ground, uh, without holes, many of the animals simply couldn't live. So if the sand is too soft and it caves in, or if it's too hard for them to dig into, uh, they simply can't live there. Some certain species simply cannot live there. And sometimes this is over a broad area uh, as to whether the soil is suitable uh, for digging and is based on a lot of different things. One of the uh, things you'll find if you have a, uh, a ridge that's a crossways of the wind and it has like a bow wave, if you, if you uh, viewed the lecture on wind and structure like that, you'll know that sometimes as the wind comes across a valley or an open place and hits a mountain, that shifting, the wind is slowed down and the sand and dead insects and pollen and other light debris, leaves, fall out and uh, lay there on the ground. Well, if you have the mountain shedding debris is off these alluvials, and of course we're talking ages now, talking geologic time. It runs a fresh uh, batch of gravel down. Centuries pass, putting soft sand and, 
and leaves and, and debris mixed with that. Then another washing comes along and mixes and, and uh, covers that last and then the wind over the time puts it back. And this over and over again oftentimes builds uh, a soil somewhere in that alluvial angle that's optimal for digging holes, for lizards, for turtles, for uh, foxes, and so forth. And it's a crucial environmental attribute for them. It is a matter of life and death to have that proper soil that's both fertile, but still can be dug in, but won't collapse easy. So you end up often finding this in kind of a strip or wrap around a mountain that has this proper area that is uh, good soil to be dug in. And when you find a place like that, it's, it's good to note and understand it. It's, it's uh, how it keys in with the rest of the environment. Uh, one of the ways it will key in with the rest of the environment is you may have like some hawks or eagles living up in the higher elevations, the rocky portion of the mountain. But actually, they live off and hunt that bow wave, that area where the wind debris and the alluvial have mixed in the right proportions to make it suitable for digging and yet still open enough for their hunting by flying and still fertile enough for the animals to uh, make a living off of, whether they're an insectivore or you know, they're just eating plants of various types, so your insects and so forth. But they have a whole population. And of course, once these holes are dug, uh, they're, they're never a single purpose hole, really. Uh, they might be at first, or while the, the particular occupant uh, uses it, uh, it might have a single purpose. But sooner or later, they'll either get They'll either just die of old age, or they're going to get hunted, or just move on for other various reasons. And usually insects and other small animals usually take over. It's, it's a good place for scorpions and spiders and centipedes and, and these kinds. And now some animals, some, some insects, uh, the tarantula, it's not an insect, but they'll make their own burrow and, and use it. And you have this wide uh, array of both animals digging and then secondary use. And that secondary use, uh, of course, means that uh, it, it's, a, it's a resource for, for everything for, or for a wide range of, of uh, an, animals as well as plants. Uh, a lot of times uh, seeds and stuff like that can fall down in these holes and eventually they do cave in and then a rain can come along and now you have a seed that's actually planted and there's a certain amount of uh, churn in the soil uh, when it's ripe. Uh, so holes in the desert are really an important thing to understand, to be aware of, and uh, truly understand their significance. Uh, and for somebody trying to learn the ways of the desert, uh, this is a necessary knowledge. Uh, and with that, I, I thank you. I hope that uh, I've enlightened and, and, and helped uh, somebody understand their significance and increase your enjoyment of the desert. And with that, I thank you.